Meet Emwego, the top-rated event membership that is changing the way you go to events. Emwego is a one-stop shop for discovering and going to a variety of sports, concerts, and local events in and around Dallas. Memberships start as low as $19 a month, and tickets are included with your membership. Seriously, no additional ticket costs or service fees. For a limited time, listeners get their first month of Emwego free with code PODFREE. Go to inwego.com slash podfree to learn more and use code podfree to try it. And we go for free. This is a squad podcast. What's up? What's up? BS3 Sports. Okay, sports news, get it first when you're getting off of work. Even when you're at work, acting like you're working hard when you're hardly working. I'm a maverick like Dirk, getting Franklin's like Kirk. Hold, hold up, boy. X Squad, you don't know them boys. Being talking facts on every topic. Overall, we just talking noise, just being boys. Covering Texas sports in them tall hills. That with the fake pass over to Elliot. Better gorge grills like a car for real. Yeah, Cowboys gonna bring a bow back, Lord willing. Yeah, Mavericks gonna bring a ring back with Mark in it. We live sports, we talk sports, we dream sports, we eat sports. The teacher about to teach the course. Welcome to BS3 Sports. Ay, 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 ay. Gross. Oh, man, oh, man, yeah. Welcome to the weekend wrap up show, episode 160. Man, continuing to hit the double digit milestones or triple digit milestones I should say man we got a great show today we got news coming out of left field maybe maybe not but today's show is entitled Jerry and the Cowboys steal the headlines again it seems like every single week Jerry finds a way to get in there Uh, you may want to call him King Petty of the NFL because he will make sure that his headlines are Get up there before anybody else's. And we had a crazy wild card weekend. And a lot of news outlets, a lot of people are talking about Mike McCarthy, who is the new coach of the Dallas Cowboys. So, we got a great show. Uh, Thank you for everyone that's tuning in. Shout out to my BS3 Radio fam. Make sure to check out all the shows. Make sure to follow the shows. If you're an iTunes user, subscribe, leave a review. Uh, go to the website, bs3radio.com. I also shout out to my X squad radio fam. Also, No Phony Podcast Network. Uh, each and every one of you guys has supported. So this is the first Monday in the new year, and we got a lot of news. Uh, shout out to Holly Newsom. Thank you for tuning in. Sad Galloway, first and foremost. Uh, Miss Mocha Bella, thank you. Seth Galloway says, Jerry wanted to spotlight all on him. He does. Every single opportunity that he gets, he wants it. He wants that spotlight. And that is one thing I will always say about Jerry. Jerry is a marketing genius. He, The amount of money that he paid for this team and what he's getting out of it at this point uh, is beyond crazy. He, is, he has flipped this thing um, 200 fold probably more than that I don't know the exact numbers but I do know that Jerry has been able to market this team if there is anything else I can say about him positive negative one positive thing for sure is that he is a marketing genius and he's figured out a way to put the Cowboys first and foremost on every single outlet this morning so the news breaking um, like we're gonna be talking about the Dallas Cowboys head coach, the Wild Card Weekend, college football news, and more. Also, the Benny Awards to the top performers of the weekend. You can put those in the chat room whenever you feel ready. You know how we do it on this show. And if you don't know, thank you. This, if you're a first time listener, join in on the show chat room. It is very easy to do. Uh, create a profile on the speaker platform. You can join in on the conversation. Uh, It gets rowdy. Sometimes it gets funny. Sometimes it gets hyped. But it's definitely a place where you are welcome. Your opinion is valued. 
And I would love to get your comments on everything we're talking about, especially with this Mike McCarthy thing uh, just going down. He's a new coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I think the biggest thing of this is Jerry wanted a coach with experience. He did not want a college coach to where you have to start over. And I think that goes to the point that they believe they are in the driver's seat right now to possibly win and not only win, but win big. And I think the message that I've said this numerous times, the message that Jason Garrett was trying to to uh, get across was not translating. And because I was not translating and because it's been 10 years of average, you had to move on. You had to. You honestly did not have a choice, even though over the weekend, which made the news even more interesting of today, that it was so quickly, which I think they've been talking to McCarthy for a while. I don't think this is the first conversation, which supposedly he stayed over. Listen to this. He stayed over Jerry Jones's house over the weekend. That's how serious they were. Uh, which to me, it, it's kind of comical that you have a guy staying over your house that you're wanting to hire for your head coaching job. To me, that seems like a little, a little bit over the line. Um, if you ask me, that, that, that's a tad bit over the line. If I own a company, I'm not going to have a guy that I'm trying to hire staying over my house because I'm trying to see, I guess, what he's about. I don't know. But to me, that was a little bit, I was a little bit overboard. Uh, but this is Jerry Jones we're talking about. Nothing is out of the box. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Nothing is is weird or too weird for him. Uh, Say Galloway putting his Benny Awards in here early. Derrick Henry, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, and Dirk. Oh, excuse me, Kirk Cousins. Uh, those are his. Uh, but you know, it is. It's so interesting to see how this whole thing panned out. It really is. But again, this is this is Jerry. This is what he does. So uh, the Cowboys informed Jason Garrett. This was yesterday that he is out of a job, even though previously last week there was a lot of things that was linked to him leaving. There was a lot of things uh, that was being brought up and said that he's no longer the coach, that he's not the coach of this team, that he is. Um, all but out of the door, and then news coming out that he's lobbying for his job. I mean, it, it, this is always, it's never easy and simple with the Cowboys. Never. It never is. There's always drama. There's always, there's always something weird going on. Always. It, it never fails. And with Jason Garrett trying to lobby for his job, to me, that means that they still were considering it. This, it's been a week. It's been quite a while since the season actually ended. And again, this is an organization that continues to show that they are they are so loyal, loyal to a default, loyal to losing, loyal to just being average, and they're okay. They're okay with that. And we're talking about the new hire of Mike McCarthy. Put in the uh, chat room if you're joining in. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, Jerry Jones thanks Jason Garrett. He's cherished him being a member of the Cowboys family. Uh, the Cowboys were looking at candidates to replace him with NFL experience. They talked to Marvin Lewis, also McCarthy. Those are really the only two names that I've seen. Uh, all the college coaches, you think about Lincoln Riley, uh, you think about Matt Rule, none of those guys have NFL experience. So clearly you could see that that, that was a true statement, that he wanted uh, a coach with NFL experience. Now, what type of experience? Obviously, that that's a, that's a good question. Mike McCarthy, whose record, I believe, is 132-77. and 77. Uh, He has a Super Bowl. I believe he's 10-8 and eight in the playoffs. Um, so my immediate reaction is is this. 
He is better than Jason Garrett, but I don't know how much better. Um, I've been on this show numerous times saying that I don't want Jason Garrett. I'm ready for him to get out the door. I'm ready for, for this era of Dallas Cowboys football to be over with, and it is now over. So now with Mike McCarthy coming in, I'm not going to come on here and roast Mike McCarthy. I'm, I'm not going to come on here and do it because I wanted Jason Garrett out of the door. Now we have somebody else. I'm going to I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. But what I also do want to add in is that he is a lot of what he, he has accomplished was on the back of of Aaron Rodgers. That is a huge reason why he had success. I don't know how much of it was him. Because Aaron Rodgers is, is a field general on the field. Uh, shout out to my man Wilkes in the building. Cowboys whisperer. Uh, 49ers fan. But he is. You know one of those. One of those coaches that has a good name because of the players that he's coached. I don't know how much of it was was McCarthy. But at this point in time, he is now the coach here. And I think he's definitely going to have to come in day one. Day one and, and prove himself. But the way this organization has been built, who knows? He could be here. 15 years and still be the same way. But I think the Cowboys approach to this was that they believe they can win now. And that's the reason why they went after McCarthy. That's the reason why they didn't go after any college coaches because they don't, they're not, they, they don't seem to have the mindset of let's wait around and see what's going to happen or let's see how long this is going to take. Let's give it a couple years. I don't think that's what their mindset is. So I'm, I got mixed reviews. I think he's better than Garrett, so that's a positive. But I don't know how much coaching. Um, you know, Skip Bayless came on Undisputed saying, is he a fiery coach? Is he going to be able to uh, to lead this team? Is he going to be able to bring uh, something in that's going to be better, that's going to change everything? And I don't know. Troy Aikman scolds the Cowboys. He said it shines light on the dysfunction, which I agree with him 100%. The way they handled this whole situation, uh, it definitely shed some light that this team is still is still dysfunctional. It is. Just, just no way around it. No way to put it. No way to dice it, slice it. So only time is going to tell. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows how this is going to turn out. So only time can tell. All right, so we had a great slate of games for Wild Card Weekend. I was going to name the show um, NFL Playoff Surprises or NFL Upsets or Nah because there was there seeming to be some upsets, but I don't know. We'll talk about that. The Texans beat the Bills in overtime. One of the greatest playoff plays that I have ever seen by a quarterback. Uh, Deshaun Watson should have been tackled by two defenders. He ends up shedding both of those tackles, had a pass and run for a touchdown, uh, led the winning drive in overtime. And Houston rallies from a double-digit second-half deficit for a 22-19 win. First round of the playoffs. I'm I'm excited. I'm happy uh, for the Texans specifically. Uh, for Deshaun Watson, uh, for that defense, uh, JJ Watt came back, uh, and it was it was a it was a great win. And Deshaun Watson did so much for them to get this win. It just shows the level of the black quarterback this year. It just shows how much they have accomplished. It shows how. Much, no matter how they they get dragged in the mud, no matter how people say they should play another position, no, they should play the position that they've been playing the majority of their lives. That's what they should do. 
So the Texans move on. The Texans will be going up against, in their next round, uh, they'll be going up against the Chiefs. That's going to be a great game. That's going to be on Sunday at 3.05. They're playing at the Chiefs, too. Uh, the Titans. The Titans go in and win a game against New England. Uh, this this was a a standout game for for Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry has already had multiple games like this. But if anyone had any possible doubt, if they had any possible doubt on what he's able to do, he put this team on his back. They went into New England and they ran the ball like. Crazy. Derrick Henry had 182 yards and a touchdown. It was on his birthday. Uh, they beat the Patriots 20 to 13 with a great interception, a tip ball interception to, to, to win the game. It really does not get any better for that, uh, any better than that, especially if you're a Titans fan. Uh, I'm beyond excited for Derrick Henry. This is the Patriots' earliest playoff loss since two. 2009. It has been a minute. It has been a minute since they have lost a game like the way they lost this game on Saturday. So amazing. And you know, the biggest question coming after the game, the question wasn't how great of a game Derrick Henry played. The question was, what's going to happen with Tom Brady? And that, that, that was a hard outing for him. Throwing a pick six to end the game, that was a hard outing for Tom Brady. People think he may not go away. People think he may stay. Um, personally, I, I think that he may be stepping away from the game. The guy has so many rings. Throwing a pick six on your last play, I don't know how much that really matters. I really, I really don't know if that's going to be a a chip on his shoulder. The guy has six Super Bowl rings. Why, why would there be a reason to come back to try to prove something? You've already proved everything. Uh, so at this point, why is there even a reason why you need to do that? Why? And he's had a great career. He's had a great career. And the end of the road is coming near. I wasn't expecting them to make it that far in the playoffs anyway. Now, I didn't expect them to lose to the Titans, but that's it is what it is. And he said, who knows what the future holds? He didn't want to give an answer. You know, he's not going to give an answer. Belichick didn't want to give an answer. Father time is undefeated, said he right. I think time has one more year left in him. I think this is it. I honestly think that this is it for him. And he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything to prove. I'm sure his wife is in his ear like, Tom, you can stay at home. You can play with the kids. Don't you want to play with the kids all the time, Tom? I guarantee you that they're having that conversation right now. So, I mean, anyone that's married. When your wife starts to tell you something more than one time, or when she when that, that voice starts to change octaves, you know that it it's it's a lingering issue and a problem. So we'll we'll see what's gonna happen. I think this is it though. I think that was it. I think that's the last pass we're gonna see him throw. Um and this this whole organization is gonna be flipped upside down. It's going to be flipped upside down. If he does not come back, it is going to be flipped upside down. So the Titans will host the Ravens. That is, uh, I'm not going to say that's going to be a good game because I think it's going to be lopsided with the Ravens, but they play uh, in Baltimore on Saturday. The Ravens, who are led by none other than 
Lamar Jackson, a.k.a. Big Trust. I think Derrick Henry could possibly have a good game, but it's going to be a lot riding on his shoulders. It's going to be a lot. Um, Let's move on to the Vikings game, which was on Sunday. And before I talk about this, Saints fans, uh, what's, what's the excuse this time? I know you had a pass interference, um, the, the the game against the Rams, and then in the previous game, your dude couldn't tackle. But what's the excuse this time? You want to you, if you want to call that push off in the end zone, there was a lot of hands being moved around. There was a lot of there was really handsy in that end zone play. Rudolph made um, a catch. It was definitely a push off. But the the NFL senior VP of officiating said there was contact on the Vikings when he touched down, but not enough for a flag. Uh, Drew Brees had a touchdown and two turnovers. Drew Brees historically is not a turnover machine when it comes to any game, and especially in the playoffs, and he fumbles. So Minnesota wins 26-20, game-winning drive, touchdown to Rudolph, uh, let me know what you guys' thoughts are on that. Uh, do you think that was a push-off or not? Mocha says, Benny Award to Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook. They all deserve one. If the Saints run the ball more, they would have been in that position. Yeah. And uh, Drew Brees' thumb, I think that was an issue. I think and I believe that that was an issue for him. And you could tell that he was having issues throwing the ball. You could tell that when his hand basically got lightly tapped, that it ended up causing a fumble. And that just that that just goes to tell you that you could um, lose the game that you favored to. Because the Saints were highly favored to win this game. It was a lopsided uh, favor for them to win this game. So, Minnesota will be going up against the 49ers in San Francisco, excuse me, Santa Clara, next Saturday. Uh, Vikings were excited in the locker room. Drew, uh, not Drew, but Kirk Cousins yelling, you like that? Uh, and with his celebration, uh, but the Vikings should not have won this game. That they really should not have won this game. Shout out to Courtney Harden in the building. Uh, he says, "Still fly, Eagles fly." Yeah, yeah. Did the Eagles? Did the Eagles win? Just asking for a friend because I didn't watch the game. <laughs> but it's all good. You're at home watching the playoffs like we are. Uh, but a big win by Minnesota. So so I ask, is this an upset? Or is this just how uh, the New Orleans Saints are? You look at the, at the Patriots game. Was that an upset? Or is Tom Brady just on the end of his career? I don't think either one of those were upsets. I just think the Titans were the better team. Tom Brady's on the far end of his career. And I think Minnesota is the better team. Uh, as much as I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that Minnesota's the better team. But they were. And the Saints had every opportunity to win that game. And I know people don't want to hear this, but you can't just blame the last play on the game and say, oh, because of that push-off, we could have won the game. They were still in scoring position. Shout out to DJ Hammer. Thank you for tuning in. MCDE. Uh, And then the other game with Courtney Harden coming in. Perfect time. The Seattle Seahawks beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Seattle had seven sacks from six players. But the defining moment in the game. This is where everything changed. Carson Wentz went out with a head injury. It looks like it was a concussion. He exited on the second drive. If the guy leaves out of the game on the second drive, who's your star quarterback, and guess what? 
Newsflash, you didn't have Nick Foles to come in and save y'all, y'all behinds. So you got Luke McCown, Mark McCown, whatever, whatever which McCown brother it is. He came in there, he did the best he could, but not against the Seattle defense. So if Carson Wentz would have played this game, would have been closer, would they? Uh, shout out to Chief Rocker in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, would the Eagles have won? I would still say no. I was picking the Seahawks no matter what. And that's not because I'm an Eagles hater, even though I am. But that's not the reason why I'm saying that. The Seahawks are a better team. Um, and that's, that's to me, that's just the fact about it. So, Seahawks win 17-9. The Seahawks going to be going to Green Bay next Sunday. That's going to be a good one, too. Um, the, a couple of highlights from this game. DK Metcalf, that, that kid is a beast. Uh, he made one catch where he basically reached out as far as he could, dived for the ball, hit the ground, got up, ran in the end zone. Then he made another acrobatic catch. Uh, this kid is a freak of nature. He he is ripped. I don't know how much he lifts, but he could probably play linebacker. And Russell Wilson was getting the ball to him in perfect spots. Uh, Beast Mode also had a touchdown, so that's going to be exciting to see him uh, still in the postseason. And the Seahawks got a shot. They're going to Green Bay, but they definitely have a shot. Uh, Russell Wilson torched our secondary facts. I am mad because we didn't get him, uh, says Chief. A 40-year-old McCown just didn't have it. Yeah, you you bring in one of the McCown brothers, and you expect if Carson Wentz goes down that this guy can win you a playoff game? Are you serious? Uh, that has that is, that is at some of the fault of that entire organization. If that's if you think if you think that guy, one of the McCown brothers, is going to be able to lead you to to win a playoff game, you got to be out of your mind. You really do. Um, and again, they weren't expecting Carson Wentz to go down. They was expecting Carson Wentz to play, and but he. And again, another season, Carson Wentz has not finished an entire season. I, I, some people, some people's bodies can withstand being hit. Some people's bodies can withstand going through an NFL season. Some people's cannot. And Carson Wentz is on that list of the cannot. And that's just the truth. Now, let's talk about the hit. Um, Carson Wentz was pretty much down. Jadavion Clowney led with his helmet and hit him when he was falling to the ground. I do think that's a penalty. I'm not going to say that that's necessarily dirty. I don't think his intentions were to knock out Carson Wentz, but I do think that that was a penalized hit. That That's a definition of, of you know, reaching to the crown of your helmet. But to the officials... If you're a running quarterback, it's free game. Whatever happens to you, happens to you. And he was running at that point in time. But I do think that was an illegal hit. He's done. He's used the garbage. I believe uh, Chief's talking about Wentz. Do you guys think the hit on Wentz was dirty? Um, I, I think I don't think it was a, a dirty hit, but I do think it was an illegal hit because he was almost to the ground. And that completely, that completely changed the entire game. That that changed everything. That made that game basically out of reach immediately. That made that game out of reach immediately for the Eagles. All right, so we got the divisional round coming up. Vikings at 49ers. My early pick, I'm going to go with the 49ers. Seahawks at Packers. Uh, My early pick, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I think they're on a roll right now. 
Um, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. I get that, but I just I don't see it. Titans at Ravens. Uh, the Titans run, I believe, is going to end. I'm going to pick the Ravens. Texans at Chiefs. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I think Deshaun Watson going up against uh, Patty Mahomes is going to be a great game to see both of those quarterbacks, to see uh, two black quarterbacks go at it in the playoffs at this high of a level. I think that's going to be very entertaining. But the Texans almost lost the game against the Bills. And you're going up against a better team. So the odds are are kind of against you in this situation. But you are tuned in to the weekend wrap-up show right here on BS3 Radio. We're going to take a break. When we get back, we got college football news. Uh, We also got some NBA news. We also have the Benny Awards. If you have any, you can put that into the top performers of the weekend. So we'll be right back. You're tuned in to the weekend wrap-up show. unexpected car problems. Well, I am here to tell you about a viable solution. Bay 11 Auto. And my man, Melvin. You have emission problems? Brakes need changing? Transmission slipping? Is your car just driving sluggish? No problem is too big. I live on the other side of town and I drive over an hour to a guy that I trust. Melvin is honest, dependable, and definitely not in the business to break your pockets. Come see the official mechanic, Melvin, at Bay 11 Auto. You will be glad you did. You can reach him at 1455 General Arts Road, Conyers, Georgia, or 404-295-5715. That's 404-295-5715. Check out the calming and relaxing YouTube channel by ASMR Majestic. This channel is a comfortable place for rest and relaxation. Her voice gives you that calming, tingling sensation. Subscribe and click the bell for more great content. ASMR Majestic. The direct link is youtube.com backslash sexy LJG80. ASMR Majestic. Subscribe to. If you're a fan of diverse music like myself, check out the musical production by Easy Go. He uses different styles of music to create his own sound and doesn't follow the music norms. You'll hear fusion of R&B, soul, pop, rock, dance, electronic. So check out the channel on YouTube by searching Easy Go. That's E-A-Z-Y go all uppercase subscribe and hit that bell for more great music welcome back to the weekend wrap up show first monday of the year man a lot of news coming through If you're unaware, Mike McCarthy is the new coach of the Dallas Cowboys, former Packers head coach. Uh, New people coming in. Give me your thoughts on that. Shout out to Melvin in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Motivational Mondays with Melvin. When is that coming back? I haven't heard that. I don't know if I'm not, if I may not be following it or something. But let me know when we can get another, uh, another motivational Monday with Melvin. Um, So let's get to some college football news, which we had a couple of uh, breaking stories from this weekend and from today. The number one story is Tua is announcing that he will enter the NFL draft. That's Mel Copper's number 12 overall prospect. I don't really, I don't really consider Mel Kuyper to be the end all be all or or the Bible like per se on who's where and what. Um, but I, he may kind of be correct with this one because you just consider what what has happened to uh to Tua and because of his injury. But Tua will enter the NFL draft. I don't blame him. I think it's the right choice to make. 
I think if he was if he was to stay at Alabama and say something else happens and it 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 diminishes your draft stock even further. He made the right choice. I don't think coming back for another year was going to help him any. Uh, so Tua has now announced he will be going to the NFL. Uh, shout out to my pops. Thank you for tuning in. Mike McCarthy, maybe McCarthy would make the offense more consistent, which I, I do agree with that. Um, I do. He is an offensive-minded coach. And I also, I think, he's going to bring a new mindset. You need a new mindset. You need a new uh, voice. You need a new you need new direction. You need new leadership. So he's going to do all of those things. Who is he going to hire on the staff? That's the next question. It will Kellen Moore still be on the staff? I highly doubt it. I think Chris Richard is pretty much gone. So that's that's what I'm looking at now. Who's going to be on his staff? Who's going to coach the defense? Because you're going to need a defensive minded uh, coach. Um, and there may be maybe there's coaches that may get fired. Uh, two will go get your money. I agree with you said. It, it, it is time. You have done enough for Alabama. You have done enough for Alabama. It's time for you to move on. Uh, Jerry Judy, another Alabama player, wide receiver, he declares for the draft. He's going to probably be a top 10 pick. Xavier McKinney, another Alabama player, listed as a number two safety prospect. He's going uh, to the draft, which I don't doubt any of these guys. I, I am pro player in most of these situations. Uh, but Xavier McKinney heading to the draft, as well as Quintez Cephas. He led Wisconsin with 59 receptions, 901 yards, seven touchdowns. He's going to the draft. Uh, the other Wisconsin player, uh, Jonathan Taylor, the running back, which I think he's one of the uh, best running backs coming out. I think he is, um, I would say, top three. I think you got to put uh, J.K. Dobbins up there, uh, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, th- those would be right. Uh, NTN up there. I mean, those are kind of your, I think, your top three right there. But that that is uh, that's it's going to be interesting to see where they go. But yeah, kids, go get your money. Uh, Devonte Smith is staying at Alabama. He's a leading wide receiver. He's returning for his senior season. So there's a lot of names that are going to be getting out of there and going to the pros. I don't blame them. I do not blame them. Uh, this is your opportunity. If you believe you have an opportunity to get picked high in the draft and make a difference, then do it. We had one college football game from this weekend. Tulane beats Southern Miss at the Armed Forces Bowl. They win 30-13. Coming up today, we have a bowl game. Uh, Shout out to Chaos in the building. Thank you for tuning in, X-Squad Affiliate. Man, she she is the pop up queen dropping shows left and right. I'm normally tuning in. I may not be in the chat room that active, but I am tuning in. Great topics. Definitely a great addition to X Squad. The Cargos have a D coach. It's Hazlitt. What? Don't worry about us, Chief. And Chief, perfect timing that you're here. Who do you want as your next head coach? Because Matt Rule from Baylor seems to be linked. Um, you interviewed Chris Richard. So let me know. Uh, let 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 myself and all the listeners know who you want to be the next Giants head coach. Because uh, there's a lot of names circulating out there. And basically the whole NFC East besides... The Eagles are being revamped. And uh, and my, my pops over here throwing some, some uh, salt on the game. He said, hey, Chief Rock, I agree. The Cowboys will still be uh, mediocre next year. <laughs> and 
Only time is going to tell, everybody. Only time is going to tell. So, uh, Louisiana, they will be playing Miami of Ohio in the Lending Tree Bowl. So, we'll, uh, and then we have coming up next Monday, which will be my daughter's birthday. She'll be turning eight. Is a national championship game. That's going to be definitely, that's going to be a good game. Clemson uh, going up against LSU. Those are clearly the best two teams. I mean, we wanted the best two teams, and that's exactly what we have. So, even though I thought Ohio State would have been there, they're not there. So, I got to move on from that. Uh, my North Carolina Tar Heels are not playing well at all. I don't know. And a, and a huge part of it is, you know, I'm talking about college basketball. But a huge part of it is they don't have Cole Anthony, who they were leaning and depending on him. To do a lot for this uh, for this school, and they are just not playing well. This, oh my God, hate to say it, but this could possibly be an NIT year. I don't, do they even still have the NIT? I don't know because I don't really follow it. Because my tiles are normally in the NCAA tournament, but this could possibly be an NIT year. They are right now eight and six. One and two in the conference. Um, they'll they'll definitely bounce back. They'll, they'll get double-digit wins, but I don't know how good of a team they're going to be. They end up losing to Georgia Tech. Jose Alvarado with 25 points, 96 to 83. They not only lost, but they got dragged. That should not happen. But again, they don't have Cole Anthony. They depend a lot on him. And when he's not playing... They they have not played well, and this was at home, ninety six to eighty three at home. Uh, Garrison Brooks had thirty five. Moses Wright had twenty two for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is seven and seven. Tarios eight and six. Neither one of them are ranked. Another college basketball game. We had an upset. Uh, the Spartans beat the Wolverines. Uh, Michigan State their seven straight win. Cassius Winston with thirty two points. And if you look at the AP Top 25, um, as it is right now, Gonzaga's number uh, one again. Uh, Duke is number two. Uh, Baylor and Butler are rising up the ranks. Again, I've already said it. Uh, Tarios are nowhere near in there, and it's understandable. Uh, Let's see. We got Kansas at number three, Baylor number four, Auburn number five, Butler. Number six, San Diego State. Who thought San Diego State was that type of team? Uh, But they are playing well. Michigan State, eight. Uh, Oregon, nine. Florida State, ten. Some other notable teams. Uh, Dayton, number 15. Villanova, 10 and three. They're number 17. Memphis, number 21. They're 12 and two. Uh, They lost the game. It looks like they dropped from nine to 21. Colorado jumps into the top 25, and Texas Tech is right there at number 22. Uh, Shout out to G Money in the building. Thank you for tuning in. He said, I want Jim Caldwell as the the Giants coach or Pep Hamilton. Jim Caldwell is definitely a good candidate. He could definitely get the job. Uh, It sounds like Matt Rule is there zooming in on Matt Rule. And who knows? They may try to go after Lincoln Riley. Uh, I don't think they're going to pick. Jim Caldwell, even though I think he is a good coach. Uh, I want the Pats coach, uh, my old DC, Bill B. Bill Belichick? You want Bill Belichick to be the coach of the... Okay. I mean, it could happen because it, it's coming to the end of a road. Also, Josh McDaniels is out there, which I don't trust Josh McDaniels at all. I just don't. Uh, he, he had a coach with the Colts. He had a coaching job with the Colts, and then he decides... After they already blasted it on on social media everywhere, he decided he didn't want to take it. So I don't know what job is going to be, number one, attractive to him, and number two, if he's even going to stay. So Josh McDaniels was off my list regardless. Uh, The season is so wide open, talking about college basketball. San Diego State has a good coach. I forgot his name. Uh, Chief, I think it's still Steve Fisher. 
Uh, there's always hype around Pacey, <laughs> Pacey coaching candidates. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, San Diego State, I, w- I did not think they were that good. I'm going to look it up right now see who their head coach is. Uh, but the last thing I can remember about San Diego State is that Kawhi went there uh, back in the day. and that, that was pretty much it. That's all I can really remember. Uh, Brian Dutcher. Brian Dutcher is the head coach of San Diego State. And he's got these boys playing. So, big ups to San Diego State. Let's see what they can do. Uh, we are a couple months away from March. So, college basketball is about, start, uh, about to start heating up. Let me know how your team is doing. How you feel about your team. I've already told you how I feel about mine. Um, NBA. Let's get to some NBA. Uh, first off, Terry Rozier scores 29 uh, Luca had a triple double. Mavs end up losing Saturday night by three. I, I like I like Terry Rozier, and I like that he's able to he's uh, balling out over there in Charlotte. Uh, Devontae Graham had 27 points also for the Hornets. Uh, they were leading. The Mavs were leading by 20 at one point in time. Uh, and they they gotta stop giving up these leads. You gotta stop doing that. Luca has a season record with NBA leading 10th triple double, 39, 12, and 10. Also, man, um, my guy Maxi Cleaver be over there draining threes. I didn't know he had a jumper like that. I need to pay more attention. Uh, but the Mavs end up losing. Um, other news around the NBA, Blake Griffin is considering a season-ending knee injury. I know he's had problems with his knees, but I didn't know I didn't know it was that bad. But this this could possibly affect not only uh this season, but going forward. Other games around the NBA, Pistons lose to the Lakers, LeBron with a triple double. Lakers looking mighty good right now. Uh, they're 20, 29 and 7. Knicks lose to the Clippers. Montrez Harold is a baller. He had 34, 6 rebounds. Clippers are now 26 and 12. Uh, the Miami Heat, Mocha Bella. Miami Heat uh, beat the Trailblazers. Trailblazers are still struggling, 15 and 22. Miami 26 and 10 now is their record. Uh, Grogic 29, 13 and 7. And then uh, Vince Wright, the sports governor's Minnesota Timberwolves. They beat one of the worst teams in the league, the Cavs. Uh, Gorge Ding at 22, 13, 6 and 4. And then, last but not least, Memphis beats. Uh, the Suns. Um, also, there's news going around that Kevin Love wants out. Kevin Love is still a good player. Kevin Love can definitely contribute. So, any teams out there that may want to add Kevin Love, he seems to be available. Um, Trailblazers need to, to make some more trades. Heat Nation. He stays hurt. He's done. Uh, jumping over too many Kias. <laughs> Portland not looking so good with the addition of Melo. I don't think Melo was enough. Uh, You know, like kind of piggybacking off of what Courtney just said. Uh, CJ McCollum on the trade block. Whoa, okay. Uh, So coming up next month, we have All-Star Weekend. Well, news coming out that Dwight Howard will be joining the dunk contest. I think that's great. I believe Jay Morant will also be joining the dunk contest. I'm a big fan of the dunk contest. I, I, I will always be, I don't care how old I get, I will be a fan of the dunk contest. Uh, Dwight Howard, Jay Morant is in it. Uh, Derek, Derek Jones Jr. with that, that's, that kid has got crazy hops. He's going to be in it. So there's a lot to look forward to uh, when it comes down to that. 
Uh, I don't think they've announced anything yet, anything else quite yet, uh, but that's always a fun event when it comes to the NBA. So, uh, the big news from today, with the Cowboys again stealing headlines like they do best. King Petty of the NFL continues to steal the headlines. Um, a, a target that the Cowboys are looking at is possibly Saints linebacker coach Mike Nolan. Look, I'm open. I, I'm open. Uh, there, there's nothing worse than what we've had the past 10 years. So I'm open to whatever combination they want to bring. Just make sure that they don't act like Jason Garrett and that they're better than he is. Uh, shout out to Susan Sparrow. Thank you for tuning in. Nobody wants Kevin Love. There was a reason that he traded Whiteside. He's not helping the Trailblazers. I forgot he was on the Trailblazers. Wow. I'm hearing Kuzma is on the trading block. That would be interesting. Heat has impressed this season. Will be better than what uh, better than what I thought. And um, that's interesting that they got Kuzma on the trading block. Kuzma is 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 one of those. Kuzma's one of those hit or miss, though. You you may get now at, at this point he is he is not uh, a star of this team, and he's not going to get a lot of run with the star power that they have. He's going to be an off the bench type of guy. So I guess I kind of get it because he, he, he can't he can't do as much as he probably wants, and the Lakers can't really use him as much as they want to use him. So. Uh, the Rams, breaking news right now, the Rams are not retaining Wade Phillips. The Rams reportedly part ways with Wade Phillips. Could we see a possible reunion with Wade Phillips coming back to Dallas? I think it could happen. The dude can coach defenses. Being a head coach is a whole other story, but the dude can coach defenses. So I would welcome that. Let me hit Jerry up on his on his two way, uh, and let him know. I think that's a good idea, Jerry. You might want to look at that. Plus, you you like you, you like uh, Wade Phillips. You've always liked Wade Phillips. So that that's a potential that could possibly happen. Uh, Mike Nolan, old as dirt, and he's not better than uh, than Chris Richard, uh Says uh, G Money. And Mike Nolan was the dude that was wearing suits on the sideline when he was coaching the 49ers. Nobody wears suits on a sideline when you coach in the NFL. Um, Wade wasn't the problem for the Rams. Uh, Chief says, oh, hell no. He don't want to come back <laughs> to the Cowgirls. Hey, at this point in his career, he would probably go anywhere. He's just going wherever he can get paid. All right, so as we're at the end of the show, the Benny Awards to the top performers of the weekend. You can put yours in the chat room. You know how we do. I'm going to give one to Terry Rozier. I'm going to start off with the NBA. Got to give one to DK Metcalf and the person throwing to him, Russell Wilson. Also, I'm going to give one uh, to Kirk Cousins with that, that amazing throw. Derrick Henry, no surprise there. He definitely gets one. Deshaun Watson with one of the best plays in the playoffs, period. So, uh, one other thing that I do want to announce. This will be, for now, uh, the last live show of the weekend wrap-up show. I'll be going to a a pre-recorded format. It'll be uploaded. Uh, I've got a potential opportunity to uh, to get the show on on a national Station, so I'm I'm gonna be trying something out. I'm be going uh, pre-recorded, so I'll probably still just release it at uh, noon on uh, Mondays, like I've been doing. But it'll be pre-recorded, so just want to let everybody know that. I appreciate all the support. Uh, we're gonna be trying to, to take BS3 Radio and this show to new levels. So. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, shout out to Key C in the building. I know I shared it to your page late. I know normally when I share it to your page, you normally you normally in the building. But thank you everybody for tuning in. 
Have a good rest of your week. Make sure to check out all the shows on BS3 Radio. Peace. God bless. God is love. Peace.